A critical rise in ICP can lead to death. One of the biggest mistakes a nurse can make is not identifying the first sign of a rise in ICP, which would be a declining level of consciousness. I have more nursing safety priority tips like this to cover coming up. Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christina. I am a bedside registered nurse. I am a working family nurse practitioner and a mama of two. This channel is geared to help make nursing easier on you. I'm sharing tips, strategies, and educational content. So if that sounds like something you're into, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button below. So let's break down what intracranial pressure means. Intra is within, cranial is the skull, and pressure is a rise in pressure. So the normal ICP reading is between five to 15 millimeters of mercury. Anything greater than 20 millimeters of mercury requires medical treatment. So when you think of increased ICP, you wanna think of brain, blood, and CSF. Anytime any one of those are altered, it can increase the pressure within the brain. So when you have a rise in ICP, the cause can be from like vomiting, fever, head trauma, or a bleed to name a few. When this happens, your Kelly Monroe system kicks in. This is what regulates your pressures from your brain. So the CSF and the blood. Your CSF is what protects your brain and the blood is what allows for oxygenation. So the Kelly Monroe system helps decrease the pressure. However, just like anything, it can only help to a certain extent. After that, the rise in ICP can result in permanent damage. So if your pressures are greater than 20 millimeters of mercury, it can become a medical emergency and can lead to death if not addressed immediately. For the remainder of this video, I am going to cover um, number one, assessment findings for the bedside nurse and how that ties into the care of your patient with an increased ICP. Number two is medications commonly used for an increase in ICP. And number three is a review on different drains from craniotomy versus ventriculostomy. So the assessment findings, one of the biggest changes what I have observed is a change in consciousness that happens quickly, especially if this is the patient that was admitted for blunt trauma or neuromonitoring, watch them closely. You will see a sudden change and report those findings to the doctor. In this setting, typically imaging of the brain stat would be done based on the doctor's discretion. And this is what makes you a strong nurse, identifying the change. Okay, this brings me to checking your Glasgow Coma Scale, your GCS. Be sure to take notes. This information isn't just for the test, but for real life nursing care. So your Glasgow Coma Scale is scored with the point system. So three is your lowest score possible and 15 is your highest score possible. So a score of 15 would be your patient that is fully awake and alert and oriented and talking. This measures best motor response, best verbal response, and best eye opening response. A normal GCS of 15 asks the patient to make a fist and open their hands. If the patient obeys a simple response, give them a six. For best verbal response, ask the patient's name and what month we are in. If oriented, give them a five. My name is Christina, it's the month of February. For best eye-opening response, patient will be spontaneous without cue or sound, give them a four. So an abnormal Glasgow Coma Scale of three, for motor response, when asked to have the patient to make a fist and open hand, as you see, there is no motor response, so you would give them a one. For verbal response, ask their name and day of the month, and if there is no verbal response, give them a one. For eye-opening and no response to sound, pain, or no response, to painful stimuli, give them a one. Okay, next topic I wanna cover our vitals. So blood pressure widening of pressure. This is the late sign, which is called Cushing's triad. So the systolic BP will increase and the diastolic blood pressure will decrease and the heart rate will drop as well with irregular respirations. Now let's talk about irregular respirations. The most common pattern is your cayenne stokes, which is a rhythmic and pattern type of breathing with episodes of apnea. The next assessment is your temperature. So a rise in temperature can raise the intracranial pressure, which can be from a dysfunction of the brainstem. Moving on to assessment of pupils. Normal is equal and reactive to light. Abnormal findings are only one pupil dilates. That could be from compression of a cranial nerve, three. And if they are mid-position fixed pupils, it can indicate a mid-brain injury or a pinpoint 
fixed pupil can indicate a pontine damage or from illicit drug use. Now let's review the different types of posturing. Be familiar with decorticate versus decerebrate. For decorticate means to the core. So the patient can flex one or both arms towards the core of the chest. And decerebrate is when patient extends one or both arms and can include the legs, which could mean a lesion in the brainstem. Also, check assessment of the reflexes. With abnormal findings, that includes your Babinski's reflex for anyone older than two years. If you see a fanning of the toes from stroking the side of the lateral foot, that would be abnormal. When you check the corneal blink reflex, the loss of the blink reflex would indicate a dysfunction of cranial nerve five. You can also check it with a Q-tip or what I've seen is um, blink to thread. If normal patient, it would blink abnormal, the patient would not blink. Or a loss of gag reflex would indicate um, the dysfunction of cranial nerve nine and 10. If your patient is intubated, it can be determined when you section with a yonker or when you're doing oral care, you will um, not be able to elicit a gag reflex if it's absent. Medications for increased ICP would include like corticosteroids such as methylprednisone. It will help decrease the swelling of the brain. Um, this med can increase the blood sugar, so you wanna definitely monitor the blood sugars closely. Again, this is very likely a patient that would be on an insulin drip in an ICU setting. Anti-seizure meds such as Keppra, Vimpats will help decrease or prevent the occurrence of a seizure. You wanna avoid a seizure because it increases um, cerebral blood flow and metabolic requirements. Also, antipyretics such as Tylenol, also known as Ofermiv, if you're giving it IV, um, it helps reduce the fever. Muscle relaxants like methocarbamol, flexoril are given to prevent shivering. Blood pressure medications are managed based on the parameters that the doctors specify for the neuro patient. And another common medication that is given is mannitol. This is a hyperosmotic drug that increases the intravascular pressure by shifting fluid back into the brain cells to help decrease the pressure in the brain. This is a common medication I have given when I see a rise in ICP. It's one of those PRN meds in an ICU setting. Now, how do we monitor ICP? We can monitor through a drain called a ventriculostomy. It is a catheter that sits in the ventricles of the brain and the device will drain excess CSF from the head or you also have a craniotomy. This is a surgical removal of part of the skull, so the bone flap is temporarily removed to help alleviate pressure from the brain, and a device can be placed like a codman, is what I've used before in the past to help monitor the ICP. So look, we just talked about ICP that included abnormal assessment findings, medications to help reduce ICP pressure and drains, but that brings up the question how to assess cranial nerve three. So you definitely gotta watch this video next where I will cover content on how to check cranial nerves one through 12. Click the screen to see it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.